All right, folks. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this MFJ power supply. You can see down here, it's the MFJ 4245 MVP. The P means it has power poles. Up here, it says it's 45 amps, 5.5 pounds, and that's mighty light. Before we get started, I did want to say that uh, I was contacted by MFJ. This was a long time ago, and uh, they asked about this power meter, and I said I'd love to check it out. They sent it to me, and I haven't even taken it out of the box, but uh, that all changes today. We're going to enjoy this moment together. Now, if you're the kind of person that gets triggered by sponsored videos, you might want to go check out some CAD videos. If not, stay tuned, and uh, we'll see what this thing's all about. So quickly, I wanted to point out on the side of the box, there is some language that tells you all about this thing. Uh, here's particularly important, the size. 7.5 inches wide, 4.75 inches high, and 9 inches deep. And uh, I'm not going to get into the rest of that because it really doesn't matter too much. So let's see what we got. We have a instruction pamphlet, and we're just going to set that right over there. And let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box. I'm not entirely sure... Uh, what all is going to be in here yet? Okay, so here's the power supply. I did want to mention that I have a smaller version of this. I think it's a 25 amp power supply. And I've had it for, uh, gosh, I guess eight years, and it's uh, been holding up pretty good. The fan on it's a little noisy, so we're going to do a repair video on that. But uh, here you can see your current meter, and then you can see your voltage meter, and there's an indicator here that the fan is on. It has a power button, very simple stuff, a light letting you know the power's on. These are called five-way connectors. I'm not entirely sure, but you can loosen these and you can put a fork in there. Um, if you loosen it, you can see a little bit of a hole in there. You can put your wire in there. For 45 amps, uh, I would suggest that you use a pretty heavy gauge or you can plug banana, banana cables in here as well, banana jacks. Um, when you take a look at this, you get your 40 amps across these two connectors. So these would be the ones that you would want to use accessing from the front panel. And then it has this, uh, what I call a cigarette lighter adapter. Some people call this a DC voltage jack. And uh, this gives you seven amps out of here. Now, you, this is cumulative. So you don't want to say, oh, I got 40 here and I got seven here. It gives me a total of 47. That's not true. That's not how it works. And then it has a DC adjustment with a detent at 13.8 uh, uh, volts. And here you can see it goes from nine to 15 and let's take a look on the back side of this thing and see what we got. So here we have power pole connectors. That's where that P comes from, and I mentioned that. And uh, you can use your Anderson power poles and plug in there, and that says 45 amps. Um, this is 40 amps, continuous 45 max. And then here you have uh, 5 amps, and these are just the quick release connectors where you just put strip wire in there. The other thing is, is that you have a switch here that you can switch between 230 volts, and this is for your input power, or 115. We're in North America, so we're going to leave it at 115. And then you just plug your power cable in there, and then you have a fuse. Let's see how we can get this thing open. Let me grab something to pop that off. Oh, there it is. There's the fuse right there. So uh, this is fuse protected, and it says it's a 10 amp fuse. And that would be 10 amps AC, because this is where your AC power is coming in. Uh, what I want to do, because I like to do this, is I'm going to take this uh, case off. So uh, give me one second to get the tool for that. All right, let's take a look at this thing. So this is obviously the controller board or the brains of the operation. And I believe that is a Texas instrument. 
um, IC that's down there. I don't know if we're going to be able to see the markings on it. No, we're not going to. Um, I can't see that very well, but I did look it up on the schematic uh, online before before we started this video. Here are some heat sinks. This is your big transformer here. And uh, it looks to be about a three inch fan or so, give or take right there. Um, and a, a, oh, there's two fans. So I guess there's one that blows across and then this one would suck the heat out, which is pretty handy. Just taking a look around, the, uh, the construction looks pretty good. This would be a filtering network here, I believe. Uh, you have a giant capacitor down here and then you have an induction coil and another capacitor here going across to the uh, AC input. And then the power switch uh, cables run here. And uh, this is some beefy cable and it comes through here. It has a, actually has a ferrite bead around here to help with noise or interference. The switch on the back is just, uh, it looks like it's a three, three pole switch, but they're only using two of them. This is to adjust the uh, input voltage from, uh, I think it was 115 to 230. And down here we have another ferrite bar that is, uh, that is wrapped in copper. All in all, it looks pretty simple. I guess if you had to replace these uh, lights, that would be a pain to get, get in there, huh? Here we have a set of four very large capacitors. You need to be careful because these things can still hold current in them. And uh, if you discharge them, that, uh, that could give you quite a shock. There's no marking on those, so I don't know if they have heat shrink or something like that on them. But it would be nice to be able to see uh, if there was any markings on there. Let me... There are some numbers, but I can't, I can't make those out. The schematic may have the specifications for them. All right, well, I guess that's it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the case back on. Uh, we're going to plug this in and uh, just take a quick peek at it. Now, when I was like, hey, how am I going to test this? And I, I wasn't really sure what would be a good idea, a good way to do that. What I think we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to a power inverter, which is kind of unconventional for something like this. But with the inverter, we should be able to draw about 500 watts out of it. So if you think about 12 volts, which this is a 12 volt uh, power supply, um, we could uh, get about, uh, I guess if you do 500 watts or something like that, that should give us around 40 amps. 12 times 4 is 48, so we would have 480 watts would be a good load test to put on this. So let's get this uh, put back together and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We got this put together and we have a power cable running into the back. This is not where we're going to test the inverter, but uh, I just wanted to do the first power one over here so we could see this together. And uh, let's just go ahead and flip this baby on. So there you go. And then you can see we're setting in the detent. This, this voltage meter is reading a little bit low, but you can see how it adjusts. I don't know if you can hear the fan. But the fan is making some noise. And then uh, once you hit the detent right here, we're close to 13.8 on that. What you don't want to do is you don't want to overdrive this and put, you can hear the fan going up as I adjust up. We're going to leave it right in the detent and uh, we're going to see how that works. I'll be right back when we set it up with the inverter. Okay, we have the power supply here. It's plugged into the wall. I have the negative set up to the power inverter, which is a 1500 watt inverter. We have the clamp meter here so we can test the output uh, in amps from the power supply. What I want to do now is I want to turn this on. Yeah, and that's not what I wanted. Okay, we have the power supply powered up and partly connected to the 1500 watt inverter. Now what I want to do is I use this device and this is a voltage or continuity tester that you use. And what I do is I click, clip this to the positive side of the inverter. And I use this to slowly charge the capacitors in the inverter. If I don't do this, then what will happen is, is an inrush of current from the power supply goes into the inverter and it shuts off the power supply. 
I uh, tested that and it wasn't, uh, it was not fun. So anyhow, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw this in and we're going to power up the inverter and we're going to turn on the clamp meter and we see about an amp being drawn just to power the inverter. Now what I wanted to do is find a load that we could put on here that would draw a constant current. And so what we're gonna use is this nice heating pad. So let me go ahead and get that plugged in. And uh, we're gonna turn the power for the heating pad on low. And we're starting to get some draw. You can see some movement here on the amp meter. We have about four amps coming out and we are at, at uh, 42 watts. Let's go to medium. And we're not seeing much of a difference, so we're just going to go straight up to high. And I was really hoping that we would get some more draw from this uh, heating pad. So let's go find another device and set it up and see if we can increase the amp output on the inverter. I'm going to go ahead and leave this plugged in as a little bit of a longer term test just to see how it goes. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the heating pad and we're going to plug in the Sunoco Genius 10. And this is a battery charger. And it's connected to this Red Odeo 100 amp hour battery. And so let's go ahead and... Well, I guess that took more juice than it could supply. Okay, and we're back. What we're going to do is use the NoCo Genius 2, which takes less than a NoCo Genius 10. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. We're starting to see the watt meter creep up. Starting to see the amps go up on the Kiwitz meter. This needle really isn't moving yet. Okay, we're back. And uh, what we have now is this hairdo device. And I don't even know how you turn this thing on. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead and turn it up on cool. Oh, got to turn this on. Okay, you can see we're pulling about 10 amps out of here or 100 watts through the watt meter. Let's go up to low. Well, that didn't work. Okay, we've abandoned the idea of the inverter. I was just having too much trouble finding something that would put the appropriate draw on without uh, requiring an initial discharge current that was tripping the power supply here. So we have everything hooked up. Right now the power supply is off and what's happening is the battery is back feeding our power supply. Once I turn this on, we're still in the back feed situation, but as I turn up the voltage, what's going to happen is, is that the power supply is going to push current into the battery. And you can see right now we're pushing about 15 amps. So we're just going to let that sit for a second or two, and then we're going to continue to creep up until we get to around 40. 40 is the continuous discharge rating for the supply. So right now we're at 37. We'll just give that a second or two and see what happens. And now we're right at 40. Uh, 39. Let's go up a little bit higher. And according to the su supply, we're just a little bit above. I'm not sure how well that's going to come across. But the needle has moved to right around 41, 42. And uh, we're not having any problems here.
So when you apply a current to something like this, when you use your amateur radio, typically for digital modes, it'll put a constant draw in there for a period of time during the transmission. But then it will start to uh, bounce around if you're using like something like uh, amplitude modulation, FM, AM. Um, if you're using something like uh, at single sideband, it doesn't give you the same consistent current draw. Here we're dropping a little bit, but that may be the battery is not pulling because the battery is actually charging. And the amount of current coming out of here is being adjusted by the BMS uh, requirements inside the battery. But uh, overall, this is pretty good. And I think that's going to demonstrate, hey, this can hold its continuous draw current for a period of time with, without issue. I wouldn't have any problem connecting this up to my radio equipment. Let's go ahead and turn this down. And now we're going to go ahead and turn everything off. All right, folks. So as I mentioned, I do have uh, some other MFJ power supplies. I have the 4225 MV and uh, that runs my upstairs shack. And then I've got a power supply over here. It's the MFJ 4230 DMP. And I like both of them and had them for a number of years and they work great. And uh, planning on using this, I actually have a 200 watt amplifier and it requires a 40 amp uh, current in order to run correctly. It says you want to have somewhere around 40 amps of power. So that's why I got this out and I figured I might as well do a video review of that. I'll do an update longer term as to how this worked out. And if there's any problems, I'll come back and do another video. But uh, I just wanted to wrap this video up and say thanks for watching. I do appreciate MFJ for sending this to me for my consideration. And uh, that's really going to do it. I like it. And we're going to give it a try. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Totally appreciate it.